Today we want to talk about how to save hundreds of dollars on the homestead. Good afternoon and welcome to Barely Homesteading. Lumberjack here. And today we want to dive into one of the details of our motto here on the homestead. Use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. That second one, wear it out, when most people think about that, they think, well, use something until it breaks and then replace it. Well, we take wear it out a couple of steps further. We wear something out until not only does it break, but it's no longer repairable. And so today we want to talk about some of the things that we uh, repair here on the homestead in order to save money, because there is significant money to be saved by repairing things yourself. So here are some examples that we have done over the past couple of months of repairs on the homestead and comparisons to the cost that it would have been to either hire someone to repair it or to buy it new. So today we're going to be repairing this electric toothbrush that Mama Bear and I use. Um, this is a toothbrush that has an internal battery and is supposedly non-repairable. Uh, when companies say they're non-repairable, it simply means that it's not easy to get to. It doesn't mean that you can't actually repair it. And so we're actually uh, going to be replacing the battery in this. Um, <clears throat> we noticed the battery uh, starting to degrade a few months ago and it's now to the point where you can't even uh, get through a full uh, brushing before it wears out. So on this particular model, sweetie don't touch, okay this is very hot don't touch. So on this particular model, simply open up the bottom with a coin, slide out that plug, and then the entire internal uh, mechanism is one solid piece. Just push it out. And so the battery is right here on the back side. And when you look at this battery, it is essentially just two AAA batteries that are held together with some shrink wrap. And so we're going to just pop this out. All right, so we're just going to take these batteries out. I went and grabbed a flathead screwdriver that I could get back behind them. There we go. And so the reason that this uh, is listed as non-repairable, other than the fact that you have to completely tear it apart, is these batteries are actually soldered to the wires and so to replace them you have to get in and unsolder those terminals. So we're going to cut off this shrink tubing, desolder this battery, and solder the new battery in. All right, so we've got the shrink tubing Cut back to expose the solder joint. Now we can get in there and desolder those. You can see on the new battery, here are the terminals. They're quite a bit smaller than the original terminals, but they should work fine.
Now, when doing this repair, you want to make sure that you wire it back up correctly. Uh, positive to positive, negative to negative. And so that's how we're going to do this. Now, I am not the best solderer ever. And so those of you who are definitely better at this, don't be too critical. All right, so battery is re-soldered. We're gonna put some tape over it and then we're gonna put it back in. All right, all put back together and it does work. So let's go get it charged and should work good as new. All right, so today on our use it up and wear it out portion, uh, I've got a fan and this fan is doing this. So we've actually had this happen before um, because we burn our wood stove so much we get a lot of dust in the air and the dust will get into the motor and kind of uh, foul it up and so I've been able to clean these fans out before and get the dust out there and that worked fine. So that's what we're going to try to do today. All right, so it looks like I've been able to blow out whatever the uh, fending piece of uh, dirt or soot or ash was. I'm going to take this down to the garage. I'm going to blow it out with the compressed air uh, just to try to get it really cleaned out so I don't have to end up taking it apart uh, here in just a couple of weeks. Okay, so I'm back from the garage. Blew it out with compressed air. And what I noticed down there is I actually have... Uh, a little bit of hair wrapped around the axle. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off just to make sure it doesn't work its way back into the bearing of the motor. Alright, so it's working pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and then we can uh, go ahead and put it back where it was. Okay, some of you may be looking at this particular repair and say, is it really worth it to spend $5 to repair some earmuffs that only cost $20 that I could buy new? Well, this is also an investment. So this repair wrap uh, that we use to repair these earmuffs, I've never used this particular uh, repair before. And so this gave me a, a very inexpensive way to test out this particular repair and see how it works so that if I need it in the future I know if it will work in that particular situation. So I learned quite a bit. First off, uh, I just picked this up at our local uh, blue themed home improvement store and uh, they have several different sizes and lengths. Uh, it's in the plumbing section at the uh, particular store that I've picked it up at. And this uh, works well couple of things that I learned. First off, it is very messy. So this is an epoxy uh, inside, you know, kind of embedded within this wrap 
material. And once that epoxy gets wet, it gets really sticky and messy. So you want to make sure that you're using gloves, that you don't have clothes on, because if you get on the clothes, it's never coming out. Uh, that you know you don't want to ruin the good clothes. And so uh, that's a couple of things that I learned. Uh, another thing that I learned is that this wrap repair uh, works well if you have a long length of two things that you're trying to bond back together. So my earmuffs were uh, about on the smaller side, of, I would say, of the length that you would want to have to be able to put two things together. We tried to use this on some headphones, one of my kid's headphones that had broken, and there just wasn't enough length there to be able to wrap it and hold it uh, together. So you do need a, a bit of length to do this. Uh, but overall, I'm very impressed. Uh, once it dried, it was very hard, uh, very strong, and those earmuffs are basically good as new. So I would definitely recommend this. This is not a paid promotion, but just FYI, if you've got two things that are something that's broken and you've got two pieces, uh, this is an option to put them back together. installed. Let's see if it actually fires up. It's getting red. Don't know if you can quite see that on the video or not. goes. Fix the oven. So some of you may be looking at this and thinking to yourself, well that's great lumberjack, but how do I repair stuff? Well, most of this I did not have uh, knowledge or education on how to repair any of this. A lot of my experience comes from just taking something apart and seeing how it works. I also have found and learned a lot by getting on the internet. Uh, YouTube has a lot of videos out there on how to repair things. In fact, uh, the toothbrush that we just got done repairing or showing you how we repaired it, uh, that came from a video that I found on YouTube that someone basically uh, took their toothbrush apart and figured out that, hey, we can replace the batteries here. So I encourage you that uh, don't be afraid to take something apart and see if you can fix it. If it's already broken, uh, there's not much to lose in trying to fix it yourself. Um, unless it's something, you know, high dollar appliance that you might be able to get a, an expert in to repair. But once you feel comfortable doing repairs yourself, you're going to find that you can do a lot of these repairs <clears throat> on your own and not have to hire someone. Now, if you don't feel comfortable, obviously don't do it. We always want you to be safe. And there are some repairs that do require a specialist. You know, we had a water, a water line break here at the house a few months ago, and it was in a spot that I couldn't really get to very well, and so we called in a plumber. So if you feel comfortable and you can maintain safety, you know, feel free to dig in and, and try to fix it yourself. Uh, those things that do require special, specialists, you know, sometimes you got to do that. So with that, this is Lumberjack from Barely Homesteading reminding you to use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without, and we will see you next time.
Please like and subscribe. Bye.